The South Africans appear divided over whether Ntlantla Nene should resign. The finance minister has reportedly asked President Sir Ramaphosa to fire him. That came after his admission that he held several meetings with the Guptas at their home and businesses. Well, a few years ago, he told the NCA he'd never formally met the family. Well, now to weigh in on how Ramaphosa should respond uh, to this reported request by Ntlantla Nene to be fired, we're joined by Corruption Watch Executive Director David Lewis. Uh, David, good morning and thank you very much uh, for coming in this morning. This basically, from what I've picked up in social media and commentary and stuff, two big schools of thought, so to speak, in my view. One is saying that he has come out, he said this happened, let him be, we need stability in the Treasury. And the other school of thought is saying he hasn't told us everything, how can we forgive him as he's asked us to do? So before he goes, if he's going to go, he must tell us everything. What's your view? Yeah, you know, when, when I was asked to do this interview, we did a quick poll in our, in our office yesterday, and they're equally uncertain about, uh, about what we should do. And, you know, you know, Nene proved himself to be, it appears, a real hero on the, on the nuclear deal and the standing up to Zuma on the SAA thing. But I'm afraid that although I don't think that the fact of him having seen the Guptas should be decisive, I think the fact that he didn't tell the truth about it and the multiplicity of his engagements with the Gupta demand answers. And I'm afraid, I think, that he is going to go. As I say, when you see the other end of the scale for him, I wouldn't expect him to be out of public life forever unless there was something really sinister in those meetings with the Guptas. But I think he now really has to come clean. You know, I think he probably will have to go. And I think I would expect in time to come to see him back in public life because, uh, you know, one shouldn't forget how he's, you know, when the rubber hit the road, how he did stand up. From a timing perspective, we're about two weeks or so away from the midterm budget presentation yeah. in Parliament. Some people are saying maybe he must be allowed to do that and go afterwards. How would you respond to those kind of comments? Yeah, you know, I, you know if it's possible to do that, maybe that is the mm -hmm. practical solution. I mean, how he will be greeted in Parliament oh, and, a and story. is a different story. But, you know, you know, this throws to me, you know, this says to me how deeply the poison spread from the president's offices in Latuli House and the union buildings. It also says to me, you know, that while we're firing, uh, you know, Nene or calling for Nene to go, we still have sitting in the cabinet the likes of Gigaba and, uh, and Lamini. And I would hope that this you know, if the president feels constrained to accept Nene's resignation or to fire resi uh, Nene, I would think that he could look at a couple of other Shuffling people as well. Other yeah, as you know, well. I wonder what they would have said if they'd been presented with the nuclear deal to sign. I promise you it would have had more to do with the effects on their, on their, uh, what was in, in it for them rather than what was in it for the country. David, what do we read into Ntlantla Nene making that request to, to President Ramaphosa to say, fire me? and that he hasn't resigned up until now. And uh, while we're talking about what the president should actually do in this situation, you kind of have maybe just an, oh, I have a niggling thought at the back of my mind, <coughs> uh, excuse me, saying, did the president maybe know that these meetings had happened? And isn't Lantanene possibly saying, you fire me if you think now that I should go, maybe, you know? Is, it, is there a school of thought out yeah. there that maybe President Ramaphosa did know something? Maybe he had an idea that this had happened? Why? Why would he make that request to the president and not just step down uh, on his own? I, I hadn't thought of that, I have to say. I mean, I, I had taken this to be that he said, um, I'm offering to resign. Do you want to accept mm. my resignation or not? Uh, you, know, it, you know, to give a more sort of positive spin on it, it may just be a recognition of the disruption that is generated, uh, you know, as Dan has said, like with the medium-term budget coming up mm. in two weeks' time. I'm offering to resign, but I'm not going to uh, simply walk out on you if you think it's more convenient mm -hmm. that I should stay on for a, a while. So maybe that's a, you know, maybe that's a kinder take or more optimistic take. But I, I don't. I never really thought that this meant that uh, the president had known about all this. Yeah, because I mean, timing-wise, there are many other factors you're thinking about now. You've mentioned uh, President Ramaphosa possibly using this as an opportunity to reshuffle uh, some mm. areas. Malusi Kikaba, by the way, we're reporting this morning, is going to be in Parliament today. Yeah. Still on the Gupta citizenship yeah, yeah. route that's still going on. Parliament is probing that to get an understanding. But 
I mean, we've got Moody's the coming Friday. Yeah. They're going to give us a credit rating. Yeah. They are still maintaining us just one notch above junk as a country. We have the midterm budget coming up, and we're not that far away from elections. And we just had a job summit, and this Tumamina campaign, you just... Sir Ramaphosa must be in a kind of a bind about this. Yeah, you know, I think he's got the, made one of the most difficult jobs in the, in the world. Um, you know, but, but I, I would say, you know, use this as an opportunity to seriously clean out the stables. You know, if there is opportunity to be made out of crisis, then, then that is, is it. Because, you know, truly, as I say, Nene has served the country very well, as demonstrated maybe most graphically by the, the nuclear mm -hmm. deal. But does that mean uh, that we forgive and, well, that we, and, and that we accept? Well, it uh, does. That as no, exists, I don't think know. it necessarily does. Because we does. say the country is divided. I mean, you heard yeah. in our intro also saying we're divided. Do we sort of favor, you know, do, does it make it okay? No, it doesn't. It doesn't yeah. make it mm -hmm. okay. You know, I think that, uh, you know, ultimately we're going to see that there's a spectrum of, 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 of guilt here. And that's why I think it's important to know what those six or 11 or however many meetings it was with the Guptas were about. Mm. Um, one or two, I would have said, mm. you know, the president says, go and speak to my friends. What can you say really to any of our yeah. bosses who might have required you to go and speak to one of their friends? But the multiplicity of meetings you know, does demand an answer. Mm. And, and, the, and the untruths, I'm afraid, are is pretty absolute. Yeah. David, as we conclude, and very briefly, this and anything has come out of the state capture inquiry mm. during the, his testimony there. Mm. Are you hopeful that the state capture inquiry, which is going to be running for more months, will really take the country out of this quagmire of corruption and state capture? I think, I think it could make an important contribution to doing that. I mean, that having been said, I hope it doesn't discourage, I hope if Nene is removed, it doesn't discourage others from telling the truth at the, at the Zondo Commission. You know, I think that's a, a, a consideration that sort of gnaws at me a bit. Thank you very much. That's a Corruption Watch Executive Director David Lewis.